What converts a cub into a king that rules is a fierce fight with the reigning monarch. While this cub was born a king, was born a leader, leadership is never given. A fierce battle is preceded to taking over the kingship. I ask you, what establishment, what systems do you need to wrestle down for you to take over the leadership that is legally yours? What thoughts do you need to bring into your captivity? What habits do you need to overcome? What battles must you win? The king marks his kingdom. You'll find lions being very clear with this. And they do in two ways. They, and I hope you don't take me to be naughty by saying this, they urinate around their kingdom. I think you've seen that, even with dogs, isn't it? And then they roar about five kilometers distance. And they do that every day. And that's sending a strong signal to every other male, this is my kingdom. Any penetration is not tolerable. I ask you today, have you marked your pride lines? Have you demarcated your domain? Do you even know your domain? Do you know to what extent you want to influence this world? Have you marked your territory? Because you can't lose that which you don't have in the first place. Once they mature, it is interesting to note that they have mating rights with any lioness in the pride. So the male can mate with any lioness, and many boys like this part. But men know there's a responsibility to every privilege. There is no man who takes the privileges of a husband without the responsibilities of a husband. But to all of us, men and women alike, promotion comes with responsibilities. You can admire the glory, but you neglect the responsibilities associated with the new position. But while every single male is entitled to meeting with the lionesses, I regret to tell you this, most do not. During the mating season, the weak males get eliminated so that they don't pass on their seeds. Nature rejects weakness. Weaklings are killed and destroyed. Never play weak. Stand firm. Stand strong. <laughs>